Come with me to Florida, where we will configure DHCP relay. By the time we're done here, we will fly to a faraway place to see the power of Cisco DHCP relay. You remember what that's from? Wayne's World. Not a movie worth watching if you haven't ever seen it before. It's an old movie. Kind of bizarre. So let's first off revisit where the typical place you see DHCP relay is used. You will usually have a DHCP server, and that's usually running Windows in most environment, although Linux is making a big stand these days. Um, and you set up all your individual scopes inside of uh, a DHCP ma Microsoft Management Console plugin, and you'll set them all up um, for all the different VLANs. But this server in itself will only be on one VLAN, most likely in our environment, VLAN 10. So you'll go into whichever device is providing the routing for your network. So if you're using a layer three switch, you'd go on there. If you're using a router on a stick or, or the, what we're, we're doing in our case, you would go on there and you would set up these other VLANs. Let's just say we've got our client in VLAN 30. You would set it up to where this will actually send a broadcast in on that device. You'll configure relay, which we're going to do in here to send it over to the server on VLAN 10. Well, in our case here, we don't have a DHCP server sitting there on VLAN 10. My thought is we can actually do a even better situation for your learning. We can actually put a couple puzzle pieces together and configure DHCP relay from Florida's perspective. Here's what I mean. In Florida, we actually have our VLANs configured. We've got VLAN 10, 20, 30. We, I, I've mirrored the setup that we've been using uh, in Arizona, in Nevada, down in Florida. And we've got this switch here that still has the old IP address configuration. So what if we set it up? What if we set up this guy so it's a member of VLAN 10, so we configure a VLAN 10 interface. Then we set up that interface to be a DHCP, if I could write that, DHCP client to where it's gonna send a broadcast out. Now that's gonna go out on VLAN 10. Now this guy happens to be configured as a router on a stick. Now I will tell you in normal circumstances, you would set up this router to be a DHCP server for the office in Florida. Um, because what I wanna do is I wanna set it up to where instead of being a DHCP server, it actually relays it to our central DHCP server. We'll set up the scope right here and this will send it back and you'll see relay in action, hopefully delivering the IP address to our switch here, which is, it's gonna be that DHCP client. Now, why do you think it's a bad idea most of the time to set up a remote DHCP server? Think about that. Well, it's because if you lose your WAN connection, you lose the whole office. DHCP is what gives the devices their IP addresses. And if that's not there, the whole office goes with it, right? So you don't want that to happen. But that being said, let's use our lab as a learning workspace. So where, where I'm gonna go is first off, let's start off here on this router because I wanna configure the scope and that'll be for 10.16.16.0, which will be the VLAN 10, which is what we'll use for this switch. Looks so like we have our dinosaur chasing the chicken. Meanwhile, I'll move our console cable right here. Flip back over. All right, good. Router one console is available. We'll get into privilege mode. Um, and this guy is a DHCP server already. So let's do a show run. We'll do section DHCP. And we've got, uh, the, for, this is for the Arizona site. So we're gonna come in here and we'll do um, IP DHCP pool and we'll name it, uh, how about we do Florida VLAN 10. I like using names like that so we can easily identify it later. And actually, as always, we want to do our excluded addresses before we put that scope together. We'll say 10.16.16.1 through 10.16.16. I usually will leave at least the first five addresses for things like servers and gateways and switches, etc. So we'll, we'll exclude those. Then we'll go in into our Florida scope. We'll do network 10.16.16.0 slash 24. I'm just staring up here at, at the commands that makes it nice and easy a nice template to follow default router will be 10.16.16.1 dns server use those same two and domain name we'll do uh how about florida.cbtnuggets.com 
and good we've got the scope configured cool now now the dhcp server itself doesn't need to know anything beyond i'm a dhcp server it's just responding to requests normally the relay agent is where the work comes in that actually packages that dhcp request and sends it up to the dhcp server so let's go there we're going to go to actually we got to take our, our airplane trip whoosh, over there to florida so i'm going to grab my console cable here stretch it all the way across to our Florida router. You know, one using Telnet at this point would be wise. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here, hit the enter key a couple times. There we go. Logging in on the Florida router. So let's get in and just examine the interfaces. Show IP interface brief. Uh, this guy is set up as a router on a stick. Now, technically, we would want to do relay agents. If we really had central DHCP, we would have DHCP for all of these different uh, VLAN subinterfaces. Uh, and we would do this command under each one. But I'm just going to do it under one for now. You go under interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 10. Essentially, you're going under the interface that's going to receive the DHCP request, right? Remember, we've got, if we go back over here to Florida, we've got this switch, which is going to be coming in on VLAN 10. I'm going to set up a, a VLAN 10 uh, uh, SVI, switch virtual interface on that guy that we're going to use for management. So his broadcast will come in on VLAN 10 and be received by that subinterface, fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 10 right there. So that's the one that we're going underneath. So back to the configuration, it's one key command, IP helper address and the server that you would like to forward the DHCP request to. So in this case, <laughs> well, we got to make sure we know who that is. You can see right here, we've got these devices connected to the uh, Metro E cloud, but I, I don't think I ever put on the diagram what addresses they were. We've got 172.16.03. Hang on, let's, let's get back to the, the diagram right here. That would be this guy right here. 172.16.0.3 and the way that I set this up was these guys was just 172.16.0.2 and 172.16.0.1 and matter of fact a quick way to verify that would be to go on to our device and before we hit that helper address do a show CDP neighbors and we should see uh, in this case uh, the Florida router 01 sees Nevada router 01 right there and Arizona router 01 do the show CDP neighbors detail and that verifies uh, Arizona router 01 is 172.16.01 Nevada router 01 is 172.16.0.2 so going back into our our diagram I'm going to go under that fast ethernet 0 slash 1 interface and I'm going to the the dot 10 and say helper address and forward the request right up there to 172.16.0.1 Cool. Show IP interface brief. Config T. Interface fast ethernet 0 0.1.10. 0 slash 1.10. IP helper address. And I'll hit the question mark. 172.16.0.1. Bam. Good. One puzzle piece out of the way. Let's get back to our diagram. It's now going to receive any DHCP requests on that sub interface and forward them up. But now we need to make sure this switch is configured to send those DHCP requests. So let's head on over here. I've got my console cable plugged into the router. Reach for the scars, reach for the, all right, back around. Good, we're plugged in. Now come back here, bring our configuration back up and let's see if it works. We're gonna get into uh, privilege mode, show IP interface brief. Hit the enter key. Right now, it's still low. Oh, I did set it up for, for VLAN 10. Well, that's a static, a manual assignment. I forgot that I did that. Um, so we should be able to convert that to VLAN, to DHCP and it pick up an IP address, probably the dot six, which is the first non-excluded address from that DHCP scope. You remember that? Okay. So we'll come back here. Interface VLAN 10. We'll do no IP address. Get the dot two out of there just for the time being. And we'll do IP address DHCP. Enter, show IP interface brief, and now we wait. Does the DHCP relay work? 
Let's find out. I'll hit the up arrow. And, oh, actually, <laughs> the, the status message beat me to it. It says, interface, VLAN 10, assign the HTTP address. Bam, that's the first one, 10.16.16.6. It's now there via DHCP. Let's move our console cable back on over to our Arizona router and see if we can see that now in the DHCP bindings. Move aside, dinosaur. All right, right here. Hit the enter key a couple times, get logged in. Show IP DHCP binding. And right there, we've handed out that address, relayed across the wide area network, across the Metro E cloud to the Florida switch behind that head end router. That is how you configure Cisco DHCP relay from a far away place. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.